So, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll talk about features that we have introduced in 5.7 uh, with regards to security. Um, uh, is this safe harbor statement? Uh, will be common for each and uh, presentation you see. Uh, if if we are to categorize uh, security features that are part of 5.7 release, we can broadly classify them in four areas. Uh, user management related features, the activity control related features, encryption and communication security, and uh, the attempt to make the installation secure by default. Uh, we'll, I'll go over each of this, uh, uh, each of this category and list the features and explain a bit in detail. Uh, okay, so with user management, uh, we have password rotation policy support and alter user enhancement. With the release of 8.0, which, uh, which was done last year, September, uh, we have support for SQL roles as well. Sanjay covers some part of it already. Okay, so what is password rotation policy? With 5.7, uh, the alter user statement now supports uh, various level of control on when password would expire. For example, if, uh, if it's a non-critical account, you can set that the password will never expire and the user can continue to use the same password happily forever. Uh, there can be a server-wide default, which is controlled by uh, a global variable called default password variable, uh, password lifetime. Uh, and uh, let's say if it is set to value, uh, it, the, this will accept the value in terms of number of days. Let's say it's set to 10 days, so after every 10 days, the user's password will expire. And if you want specific control at each user level, you can specify the interval in, in terms of number of days where the password will expire. Uh, the alter user support is now enhanced in 5.7. Previously, it used to be limited to locking the user account and uh, password expiry. Now you can change the credential. Uh, Something which was not possible till 5.6, you can change the authentication plugin, which is used by the user. We support pluggable authentication. So now with Hunter user, you can change, use, uh, change and tell system to use another authentication plugin altogether. Uh, the certificate details associated with user can also be changed, uh, along with the resource allocation and, of course, temporary locking the user account, which was uh, in 5.6 possible as well. Uh, apart from these features, there are certain ancillary features like make, making the server offline or super read-only mode, which helps the management of server, allows only the privileged few users to go in and make the operation, where, whereas uh, barring all other users to use the database. With 8.0, we now have support for SQL roles. Uh, it provides an easier administration. It results into less complicated grant structure because your roles can be used as a privileged container which you can grant to many users. And it is also possible to create a hierarchy of various depth as per the user's need and you can combine various roles and uh, you know, create a combination of roles as well. Uh, there is a feature for role activation, whether it is an explicit by set role or whether you want to activate the role by default at the time of connection. Uh, all those features are also pushed in 8.0, so do give it a try, it's a great feature, and it would be great to have your feedback as well. Okay, so that was about user management for activity control. Uh, 5.7 comes with a plugin which allows you to uh, post a defense against the brute force attack. Uh, we have a plugin called connection control. Uh, it can be configured to trigger an incremental delay on fix, after fixed number of failed, uh, consecutive failed attempts. So let's say for a user account, uh, let's say after three consecutive failed attempts, the server will start introducing a delay with each failed attempt, like one second, two second, three second increment in nature. And till the time when the user provides the correct password, uh, this delay will keep on increasing. It's highly configurable. You can configure the threshold after how many failed attempts you want to trigger the delay, what's the minimum amount of delay, what's the maximum delay that you want to put in, and it also provides the statistics for DBAs in terms of information came on table so that you can see what the status of various users at any given point of time in the database. Um, for encryption and communication security, 5.7 comes prepared with the keying support. 
this is in terms of a plugin and in ODB table space encryption. We have enhanced communication security, support for TLS level 1.1, 1.2 as well, and the AES encryption enhancement, which were backported, of course, in 5.6.2. So uh, this is an overview of uh, the InnoDB table space encryption. Uh, inside the server, we have a plugin and services infrastructure, which can talk to any key ring backend server. Uh, InnoDB, which is part of the server, can communicate with the plugin and services infrastructure to obtain the key and encrypt the tables using the key provided by the keyring. Now, the keyring backend can be anything. It can be a flat file system where you use to store the key, or it can be a proper KMIP compliant keyword server based on the plugin that you have. And it can store keys away from the database. Once the database starts, it fetches the key from the keyword. Uh, passes on to InnoDB, which uses it for table space encryption with uh, two-level encryption support. We use uh, a master key of 256 bit to encrypt the table space level keys, and the table space level keys then again are used to encrypt the data. And we also introduce support like key rotation, which will uh, you know generate a fresh master key and re-encrypt each and every table key, uh, you know, to to get rid of the old key and have the new things. Uh, now we support something called SSL mode, which can it's it's an it's an evolution of the traditional SSL option in the MySQL client side because in 5.6 the option SSL on the client side can either be turned on and off, and even when it's on, it's not guaranteed that your connection will be always encrypted. So we wanted to improve that. We wanted uh, MySQL client to say that don't connect to the server unless the connection is encrypted. So we now have a more expanded version of SSL options called SSL mode, which can take various value from disabled, preferred, required. And with varying degree of support, it will either don't use the uh, SSL connection, it will try to establish SSL, it will enforce SSL, verify identity of this, uh, verify the CES sanity, or verify the server's identity. Um, you, on server side, you can uh, now say that you don't accept any connection unless it's secure. So you server can say that requires secure transport, and all the TCP plain TCP connection will not be allowed, uh, and all only the TCP SSL or the socket connection will be allowed to connect to the server. Similarly, on client side, you set SSL mode to required or higher, and you get the SSL enforcement guarantee. Um, the AES encrypt decrypt function uh, provided uh, a fixed key size and ECB uh, as a block mode support. This was very limiting. So now we do support various uh, bit size for key. And we also support various level, various block encryption mode based on the library against which the server is compiled. If it is compiled against OpenSSL, we support a range of uh, block mode encryption which are supported through OpenSSL. If it's YSSL, this list varies. So uh, you can now set a session level variable called block <coughs> encryption mode, specify the key bit and the encryption mechanism to use, and you can use EAS encrypt decrypt to start using that mechanism. Okay, so last part. Uh, so we are actively trying to make the uh, installation secure by default so as to, you know, uh, Close any loophole, it will allow potential attacker to compromise the system. It is an ongoing effort, and the first part of it was delivered in 5.7. Uh, we now support encryption connection by default. What we try to do is the MySQL server tries to generate certificate at server startup if it is not present, or through a separate utility so that server comes prepared with the DLS certificate. Client now attempt TLS connection by default. So if server supports encryption, and if client tries to connect with SSL, you are guaranteed to have an encrypted connection. Uh, there are a few other enhancements related to various degree of errors and logs details in the server log related to CA status and the possible reason for uh, TLS failure. We no longer generate a range of uh, root accounts as a part of our bootstrap process. There is a single root account generated uh, with a random password, and the password is expired. So DBS uh, 
should change the password to something which is more secure. <coughs> we also have password validation plugin installed by default, so it enforces certain restrictions on what and what cannot be in the password. Packages are more secured now. We don't have any test and demo data which is um, shipped with the server, so that re reduces the attack surface. Uh, secure file preview was the option which is which can be used to restrict the import and export location from which the data can be read or write. Uh, it's disabled by default now. It has to be an explicit choice that whether you need to uh, whether you want to read or write from a location apart from the data directive. So yeah, uh, that's about it. Thank you. Uh, I have okay. questions. Sure. At the last slide, thank you. The last line, possible of disable data import export completely. Yes. It is possible in 5.7. It, it is. I can restrict my server. Nobody can take uh, out the data from using so, export utility. No, not the export utility. It's the utility. Uh, so we support something like select start from into out file. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Or insert load data from okay. in file. So if you set secure file play to null, uh, both these operations are not allowed. Okay. And that is the default. I mean, now it's the default. If you want to relax that restriction, you have to specify that, OK, start reading from a particular directory or writing to a particular directory. Thank you. I have another question. About this table level encryption, uh, what is the performance trade off means? Uh, we haven't seen any significant. Uh, any significant. No. Is this possible? Can I, it means for certain columns I can encrypt from, from a table? Is this possible? Not as a transparent encryption, you can use uh, AES encrypt or AES decrypt function for that particular column when you are reading uh, or writing to that column. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, just uh, just wanted to make sure. Um, so all the features that you have mentioned uh, is available in the open source version. Everything is available. Everything is available in open source. I mean. Uh, well, for keyrings we have enterprise-only features, but the, the key, basic keyring infrastructure and the keyring file plugin is available uh, in community versions. Right, thank you. Mrs. Fossey, uh, make sure you are not in the I just wanted to check. It's Oracle. The actual case, the uh, actual case, I had a situation whereby one guy had lost his password, it was a middleware password, mm -hmm. and there was a change of players over time, so therefore the new guy definitely did more, and he had to do a technical refresh, which means he had to move the server to the other place, and he could not break that. Uh, is it easy to recover the password, should he need to do something like that? Okay, so I'll talk in terms of the default authentications that server comes with like native password or SHA-256. Uh, the password storing mechanism is pluggable in 5.6 onwards. So you can choose the authentication method that you want to use. For example, uh, you can use spam libraries. Uh, you, if you have your LDAP support, you can configure server to use the LDAP password and everything. But for the default methods, we do not store password, we just store the hashes. So once Server, server is only aware about the hashes and server cannot retrieve password from the hash. Uh, what you can do is, root user can use alter user to reset the password for other user and expire it at the same time. So let's say uh, user foo lost the password, you do alter user foo identified by ABCD password expire and you give ABCD to the user. What about the way? Uh, as I said, I mean, it, since it's a hash, there is no way to retrieve the password once it's lost. So if the password is lost, it's lost forever then, in the case. Because we do not store the password. If we store the password in a format which can be reverse engineered to construct a plain text password, it also opens up uh, a window for attackers. That if they get hold of it, and if they get hold of the encryption mechanism and the encryption key, they have the plain text password. So there is no plain text password stored in this on the server tables. We just store the hashes. They are cryptographic hashes. They are one-way functions. Once you have the hash, there is no way to go back. So if the password is lost, DPA has to come in and replace the password. 
Yeah, but there was, like I said, there was a change of players. And the, and the thing is, the guy, we had to call him up from his new job and ask him, do you remember the password? And the guy said, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> that really happens, you know, in real life. But, so was it the root password? No, it was a uh, middleware password. <laughs> Middleware password, it's some yeah. application password. It's, you can see, the way middleware works is that no, you know, normally you don't, you don't lock in. The, the system yeah. automatically locks in for you until you have to do something like a technical refresh. Then you have to remember the, the whatever middleware password it was, which could have been years ago. I understand, but, well, um, call it a security feature or, uh, you know, <laughs> We, we don't want to store the password in a reversible fashion. That's a conscious decision. If we do that, we are, you know, is there a way to, to manually override that? In the case? It is. Uh, you can use it or use it. No, I mean there is no way to there is no there is no way to override and say that okay, store the plain text password. No, there is no way. No, no, no. I didn't mean it that way. But if in the situation whereby it's already happened, we've forgotten all the, everybody's forgotten all the passwords already, we stored it as, we made the system as secure as possible <coughs> at that, at the moment, at the time that we thought was wise uh, during the, the deployment, but it backfired because several years later when we had to do a technical refresh, everybody forgot all the passwords. Even the guy who set the password in the first place. You can restart MySQL in passwordless mode, so skip brand tables. Um, of course, you should try to then not have it on the network. Uh, and it's a very, so it's a very risky yeah. thing. So let me tell you. So that is, but there is a possibility. The skip grant table it will not load any password. It will allow you to bootstrap the server as if you trust this environment and allow anyone to log in and change anyone's password to anything. But again, it's. It's very, very useful. I, I recommend using skip net networking as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Look, uh, I think for second slide, you mentioned something. Maybe there is in read only mode or offline. You can yes. set it uh, something like that. So, Offline mode, yes. yes. Can you read this some again, please? Uh, so, by offline mode means. Okay, so it's a new option introduced in 5.7. It's a <coughs> global option which can be set at one time. Once you set this option, nobody but the super, the, the user with super ACL can connect with the server. Okay. So, if there is a critical maintenance that you want to perform and you want to make sure that your regular application connection should not connect with the server. You set it to <coughs> offline mode, perform all the masking uh, tasks task that you want to do, okay. and then revoke the offline mode. And it is, so is this possible? Can I put my whole database in a read-only mode? It is already possible. There is a read-only mode already there in 5.6 as well. But uh, the offline mode is different. It will allow super to do anything that super wants. Okay. But it will not allow any other connection. Whereas in read only, all the connections are allowed. You can select from the databases uh, tables, but you cannot change that. Whereas offline is just restrict to a particular set of users. That's about it. Yes. But then you have an uh, offline read only also combined together. That means um, you can? Uh, that, okay, non super users can read only, but super users can read and write and. There is an option for that as well. Okay. You have read only which will allow regular users to just read and super to do whatever they want. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so this like this is an enhancement over that which will not even allow super to do so. Okay. If you want to put it <coughs> one more level. But five even five dot six supports read only. So you can put it. I have one question about uh, just now you mentioned about uh, the what was that? Um, does in this uh, brute force attack? Yes. Yes. So, if let's say there are a few, uh, not just one connection, but many many connections coming in. Just one user. Uh, more than uh, yeah, but one user would it? Uh, that oh, there wouldn't be any effect. Right? If you have if you have a single user account which is connecting through 
let's say, 10 connections. Mm -hmm. It will identify, it will count it. I mean, let's say somebody is trying to organize a DDoS and connecting from different hosts to yes. the same user, maybe. It will detect that attempt and it will block the user. Okay. That will, the delay, let's say, if it's increasing, will it uh, affect the uh, performance of the database or anything? It shouldn't, right? It, 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 will keep the, it will keep the connection handling thread in wait state for that, that much amount. Okay. But other threads will not be in okay. And of course, you have, uh, you have show process list. Identify those connections, you can manually kill them. Okay. The idea is if you reply soon enough to the attacker that your password is, I mean, password does not match or there's an authentication failure, they can start with another password. So we, we have to keep the clients waiting for service reply before you say yes or no. Okay. One last question. Sure. Uh, is there any feature available like auditing which user is changing the data means this, uh, on which channel? Can uh, I? Uh, yes. Auditing is available. So uh, we have uh, the way MySQL works is we have very many types of plugin interfaces where you where anybody can write their own plugin which adjusts to certain specific uh, APIs and can plug it in server. Auditing is one type of plugin. We have a product, but it's not in coming to Is that the enterprise audit plugin? Yes. So are you saying you're not supposed to talk about it? Yeah, so I mean, I did not cover because we have the enterprise of but there is one. So thank you. But but well, now that you have mentioned, the connection control plugin makes use of auditing APIs. Connection? This plugin that uses the auditing API to figure out when to introduce DNS. Okay. Good, so no more questions? Right. Thank you. Thank you for your time.